Okay, I guess we can start now. Welcome everyone um, to the session happening tonight, today, today morning, whatever time it is on your part in your part of the globe. Um, there have been a number of sessions about how to get started with Deep Racer already, so I have tried to kind of cut out bits here and there so that we have more time for showing the car and talking about how to start training instead. And I will be just dropping links to the more detailed sessions in the meantime. Uh, but yeah, uh, so what will we gonna talk about today? So yeah, zero to racing in 90 minutes. What I would like to cover today is, uh, first of all, uh, talk a little bit about the main star of the night, which is Deep Racer. Then uh, a little bit about how it works and what it uses to actually do its thing. Uh, then we're gonna switch over to actually starting a training uh, we're going to have a look around in the AWS Deep Racer console. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at what it... I'm going to show what it looks like to actually switch a car on and uh, load a model and put it on a track. Uh, and then like I'm going to just mention things here and there uh, that might be interesting. Um, and we're going to have some time for questions and answers. Um, so yeah, let's maybe get started. Um, right, so yeah, let's start with who I am. Uh, my name is Tomasz Ptak and I'm a lead developer at Open Market. Open Market is a company that um, enables messaging provides messaging solutions for companies that want to reach their customers uh, at a scale. And uh, it provides a number of features like um, SMS, MMS uh, or uh, RCS. And uh, well, we also have a newly uh, launched self-service platform called Indigo, which is pretty awesome where you can set up communication with your customers and then uh, get feedback from them and the responses you get will be we can be pretty much compiled into nicely readable uh, data and statistics uh, i'm also an aws hero uh, machine learning hero and uh, i'm the uh, one of the leaders of the uh, aws depressor community uh, the finalists of aws depressor league in 2019 and in 2020 uh, yeah it's happening virtually uh, just a thought i had right today that uh, probably around this time of the year i would be stocking up on some lip balm vitamins and all the other things you need to survive a week uh, in extreme hours in vegas but yeah not happening this year and i like baking bread and and i like wrote, writing things so yeah i do blog as well right so let's have a look at the car uh, you can see the uh, evo on the screen right now i've got the uh, deep racer classic or cyclops as i like to call it over here uh what is it is it it's a 118 scale car uh, which has an Ubuntu computer uh, on board. It steers the car, the remote controlled car, and uh, uses uh, a certain a few things to actually decide what to do, how to steer it. So the car has a camera in the front, and uh, the uh, computer has robotic operating system loaded onto it and it's uh, integrated with a uh, inference uh, engine well it, it pretty much you load the neural network onto it and a model uh, trained for this network 
and it takes input from the camera, processes it and decides whether the car should be turning or going fast, slow, pretty much that. Um, you get to train it um, in a service called AWS Deep Racer Console, which we're going to have a look at. And, uh, and you get to race with people using those cars, uh, either virtually, and there are three categories, uh, the time trial, object avoidance, and head-to-head -head racing, or, um, or you uh, can race physically. Well, this is limited right now, but there are options to do it, and I will also mention this today. Um, yeah, so the key thing over here is like, you can see the car, the car is pretty much like $400 to get one. So not the cheapest toy ever, but at the same time, you don't need it to actually race. Uh, it's actually quite complicated to race with it because you need a track and the track needs to be the right uh, size to, for the car to actually see what's in it and what's on it and how to react uh, because the camera is just under a certain angle. And, uh, and yeah, this might be a complication uh, really unless you've got huge space and you can just get yourself a truck because you don't only need a car, you also need a truck for this. So if not, then uh, you can train, uh, you will always train in a virtual environment and uh, most of the races will be virtual anyway, like the qualifiers for the uh, Deep Racer League, which are still happening. The October race is still uh, ongoing. And I think there will be also a chance to qualify last minute during the reinvent. So just uh, pay attention and uh, have a look at updates about Deep Racer in the meantime. But also, uh, apart from all of this, uh, there are two very friendly guys, uh, John Meyer and David Smith. They are solution architects uh, and uh, they organize an event called AWS Deep Racer Underground. So John actually has a track in his basement and you can run your model on a car during those races. And, uh, and there's also an edition, a UK edition of it that is being organized in the UK, uh, the London AWS office. Uh, and this part is being actually, uh, this part is being run by David with a cooperation from the community members as well. So I will be sharing a bit more about how you can enter the races because the formula is changing slightly right now, but this will come later. Uh, for now, like this is all you need to know. Uh, right, so I mentioned that uh, this baby is look using a neural network to actually ride around the track. And uh, to do this, you need to train it. Uh, it's using using machine learning services, obviously, and the type, the category of the ones that it's using is uh, reinforcement learning. Again, I'm just skipping a, a, a bit of it right now. I will provide a more detailed uh, session about uh, that also describes it better. But uh, in very short words, uh, at least the way I understand it is a. Uh, in machine learning, we have a few ways of learning. One of them is supervised learning, which means that you've got a data set. The data set uh, is has some answers associated with it. And you pretty much train using the data set to say like, okay, so for instance, this is a yellow ball and this is a blue rectangle. And uh, you just uh, trained network to detect whether this thing is a given specific element to just get the right answer. Then there is unsupervised learning where you've got the data set, you don't have the answers. And the general idea is uh, trying to cluster the data, find the patterns, or maybe find the data that's actually outstanding. So uh, one use that I can think of right now is um, let's say, uh, monitoring the services running to detect anomalies to, uh, to pretty much detect uh, some kind of uh, external interference in the systems, like just cyber attack, for instance. Uh, and there's reinforcement learning, and reinforcement learning is the one where you don't have the data and you don't have the answers. So this is what we're using over here. Uh, 
as I said, the training is happening in simulation. And what's happening is uh, the car starts with some uh, initial state of the network where it doesn't really know what to do, uh, but it takes the input, processes it. It actually doesn't know that it doesn't know. That's the thing. So it takes the input, it processes it and makes an action in the simulation. And then um, what we do is we take information about the action taken and the state of the car. And based on that, we reward its decision. And uh, every now and then there's a little thing in the algorithms happening, uh, in the mechanism happening where the action is being altered from what it infers. And uh, it, well, it's pretty much called uh, exploration. And uh, if the altered action actually receives a higher reward, then the car is more likely through training to take that action and not the previous one that was just inferred. So yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. And uh, what actually this means just in more like life meaning, life terms. Um, let's say you have a dog. If you want it to behave, if it does a nice trick and if it behaves nicely, you reward the dog. If it does something bad, you don't reward the dog and eventually it will kind of associate the reward with good behavior so it will behave better to get more rewards and uh, yeah that's pretty much what you do with the car as well i like to think of it more like a um, teenager uh, so if you have a teenage child if you don't have a teenager child then um, teenagers are quite uh, likely to obey your um, rules but in a way that um, annoys you the most. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I think this car is. If you tell it to go fast, it will go fast, but it will just zigzag because then it will gather a lot of high reward for taking longer time on the track than just going the shortest path. So yeah, you need to think about how you uh, formulate your reward and your rules for the car. Um, so yeah, well, let's just move on to a few definitions. These are the words that I will be mentioning all over the, over here. So in the training, uh, in the simulation, we've got something called the environment. So this is realistically a track. And then we put the car in, in the environment on the track and the car is the agent that's taking the actions. Actions are come from a defined set of um, well, action spaces, which which are combinations of uh, the speed and turning, and it's just a list of those. And kind of the car tries to guess which one is the best in a given situation, and you try to guide it towards choosing the best ones by rewarding it appropriately. Then, uh, when you start the training, the training is happening in iterations. Each iteration is a number of episodes, which is the at each episode is an attempt to get around the track. So the car gathers the experiences, it gathers the data because it hasn't got it, as I've mentioned, uh, by uh, just trying subsequent episodes. And those experiences together with the reward and what the car used as an input to actually infer this, uh, they are being stored as, uh, let's say, experiences or the data set that's being used at the end of the iteration to retrain the network. And then the, in, the training generates a new model, as we call it, which is kind of the state of all the parameters in the network that are being then used to infer actions going forward. So the car just trains using the, um, the car just trains using uh, the, experiences and improves the model and the new version of the model is being used for the next uh, iteration uh, yeah so now rewarding because I kind of skipped this part so as I said the car uh, actually I had a picture about this so the car uh, it's kind of dumb you know uh, let me just move it over here switch over the view. There we go. And yeah. Uh, 
so the car is pretty done. It just takes an input, it makes an action, takes an action, and that's it. And the same happens in the simulation, really. The, uh, thanks to the use of robotic operating system, uh, there is a simulation equivalent of a real car that has the sensors that are integrated into the system just like, uh, just like in the physical car. So it takes an image from the input, something like that. Uh, you know, just image is a set of pixels. Each pixel is like, uh, yeah, uh, each, <laughs> each, each pixel is a set of three colors, really, red, green, and blue. And uh, the minimum values of those are zero, like the amount of color in the pixel, and the maximum value is like 20, 255. So you've got it. Uh, you've got the image in the colors. If you change it into grayscale, then each pixel is just a number from zero to five, two five five, where zero is black and two five five is white. So that's what's going. Uh, what's happening on the car, and then each pixel for, and then is a number, and all of those numbers are the input to inference uh, the engine. Uh, then. Uh, this is being put through the convolutional ne neural network, which is a specific, a special type of the network, and I'm going to try to explain it in a bit. And the outcome from this is kind of a likelihood of taking each action, and the one that is more likely to be taken is being taken, just like that. So uh, the uh, the way I understand the convol convolutional neural networks is. Uh, Instead of just looking at the, those images as a bunch of pictures, uh, it's being processed like into certain, let's say, frames like this. Let's go. Let's look at this, then that, then that, then that. It's like just using shifted sections of the image, like this, and then gradually during computing, it just reduces those uh, reduces those sections into parts, it tries to extract the ones that matter the most. And uh, if it actually grabs those, that uh, ex identifies those that matter the most, and hopefully on the track, it will be the border lines and the center line and uh, the surface of the road and uh, everything is around, everything around is something that it should kind of avoid. So uh, if we manage to, uh, train it properly, it will kind of extract the features and that's what the convolutional network does. It extracts features from uh, the input and uh, this is being used to do more precise decisions on what action to take. And each action is like a speed and turning. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's happening in the car. back move the camera on yeah I only have one camera so there will be a bit of moving back and forth over here uh, right uh, so I will stop at this. I will not get into more detail. You can find more detail in the um, resources that I will now provide, which are a one-on-one -on -one session from the London Meetup and a uh, session for Peru user group uh, about racing tips and tricks. I'm just pasting this in the chat right now, actually. I think I've just done it wrong. Let me try once again. Yeah. Now it should work. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. So um, enough of talking, time to do some showing. Uh, so we're going to train the first model right now. I will go through this rather quickly the first time and then we'll go back to to kind of explain what's happening over there. Uh, so yeah, this is the console. Uh, it has a few sections. You've got the racing section. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm not sharing it. <laughs> uh, let me switch over. Ah, actually, I was sharing it. Anyway, 
Yeah, so this is the console and uh, we, it's got a few sections. One of them is the uh, racing one. The second one is about the learning and there are some resources that you can use uh, to just uh, get better at training. In the reinforcement learning section, you, the get started section, I recommend you have a look at it. It, it, it. it contains links to some courses and videos that will help you get started, but I will kind of speed it up today a little bit. Um, so yeah, in the models list, you've got the list of the models. You can see that I've got a few of those, but today we're gonna kind of ignore them. We're gonna just create a model. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I will not be explaining a lot, but I will just do, uh, quickly start it and then we're kind of will work our way back to it. And I will start with defaults and I recommend that you start with defaults uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, let's just call it, uh, I don't know how to call it, a model. We're gonna just select a loop track because I'm recently really fond of the, well, the oval track. I'm really fond of it recently. Uh, you get to choose the race type. We're gonna start with the time trial. This is the basic, most basic one and I recommend that you don't add the complication. Well, don't complicate it to yourself at the very beginning. Start just with the time trial because it seems to be the easiest one. There is a selection of the agent. I'm gonna explain what it means later. And then let's just go to next. And the reward function. So as I said, we reward the actions of the car. And in basic, what it means, basically what it means is in simulation, the environment gives us some information about where the agent is and uh, how, how it's positioned on the track and stuff like that and it's being combined with the decision that the car is taking, uh, well, based on the inputs that it received. And we get all of it as parameters. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, as parameters into our reward function, which is a piece of Python code. And it's being just uh, compiled into a single floating point number and this is the reward for each step. Ah, actually, I haven't mentioned the steps. So in each episode, the car performs steps. So it's moving, but it also takes um, every, I think roughly 15 times a second, it takes the image and then uh, processes it using the model that it has. It spits out an action and then adjusts the behavior, adjusts the behavior of the car to actually do that action. And this is happening in steps. So each step is take an image, decide what to do, adjust, run reward function, gather the image reward function uh, and action, well, reward and action uh, as the experience for going forward. So this is what the reward function does. Then we're choosing the only available algorithm, which is PPO, uh, Proximal Policy Optimization, I believe. And uh, hyper parameters are kind of like um, all those tweaks and uh, ways to tune the parameter. We're not changing anything over here. We're just going with the defaults. Uh, stop conditions, there's one stop condition, just uh, how long to train. And then whether to submit it to the Deep Racer League or not. I don't want to submit to the Deep Racer League. And start. And voila, we just started training. So now what's going to happen is uh, Deep Racer uh, has a few services. Um, it's kind of a managed service by AWS and behind the scenes, it's running the AWS SageMaker. The RoboMaker uses the S3 buckets, uh, CloudWatch, I believe. I'm not sure if it's still using CloudWatch, but it's not really that important right now. What's, uh, what's important to us is that it's spinning up all the stack that's being needed to do the training. And then oh, it uses the Kinesis video streaming. So we will be able to have a look at what the car does when it's on the track, when it starts training uh, a little bit more. Uh, 
So yeah, we've just started it. It will take a little bit and that's why I'm not going to stand here and look at it. Instead, we're going to go to the uh, model again and uh, actually we're going to go to the garage first because you can see, you can see that I actually cho I chose a an agent that I want to use uh, in the training. Uh, an agent is a uh, combination of behaviors that uh, well it's a combination of what sensors the car should have and what actions it should have uh, in the past it also included the neural network topology so it's still listed over here as three layer convolutional convolutional neural network what a mouthful uh, it used to have also a five layer one uh, it got removed uh, reasonably recently uh, because I think there weren't really, we haven't seen any particular benefits from using a larger network apart from the fact that it took forever to train the car. Uh, so yeah, it's not here anymore. Um, so yeah, let's just create a car. This will show you what you can do. So as I said, you can choose between a camera or a stereo camera because there is another car. I'm just going to put it back. There you go. Uh, there's another car that can have two webcams in front, so uh, cameras in front, and it has a LiDAR on top. This is called Depressor Evo. And, uh, and yeah, it can do a little bit more. It's used for the more advanced training, uh, racing, like the objects avoidance, because the input from the cameras is being, uh, well, it can give you, yeah, Evo, <laughs> uh, yeah, the input from the camera can, uh, well, is being converted into the depth image. I'm not gonna get into the details at the moment. And it also has a LiDAR, as you can see over here, you can just add it. So first of all, you choose the sensors, then, then you get to choose the action space. Um, the console is rather limited on what you can do over here, at least initially. Uh, because it just provides you with a equally spaced set of action um, choices. You can have either three, five or seven uh, steering angles options. So it's like a number to the left, a number to the right and the central one, which is that's why it's always an odd number. And then you get to choose the maximum turning angle. And also there is a maximum speed and speed granularity, which is one, two, or three. You get to choose the maximum speed between 0 0.1 and four. I believe that the meaning of this has been changing in the past. So like in 2019, uh, we could set the speed to even like 12 meters per second. And then in 2020, it meant like three times more. So if you set it to 12, you would never ever complete. You weren't able even to do this. That's when it got reduced to between 0 0.1 and four over here. The general idea is that it's been adjusted to be more realistic uh, in simulation. And then when you select what types of granularity you want and what speed you want, you get the number of actions that are and that's pretty much the list that I've shown you on the whiteboard. So you've got the actions uh, that are combinations of the steering and speed. I never remember whether minus, I think minus is left and uh, plus is right, but I never remember. And it doesn't really matter when you've got a symmetrical action space. And then you get to choose the most important bits, which is the name. A an agent because I can't think of anything better and the color of the shell and obviously we choose red because red cars are the fastest so that's pretty much what you do to set up the car decide on the action space and decide on the uh, it looks and the sensors that it's using and then based on what you set over here, when you start training, you can choose which car you want to use. 
and uh, you can actually use a stereo camera car for time trial as well it's not blocked uh, even a lighter one and uh, and quite often uh, i start trading on the time trial type not the object avoidance or the head-to-head -head racing because uh, it's easier to first train the car to stay on track and kind of behave on the track a little bit and then when it starts doing the right things add the complication of saying like listen here is a box you need to get around this so yeah that's the garage and once you we've got this since we've got this described let's go back to the models and let's see what's going on in our training is it already started or not yet still loading it's still initializing so you can see in the video it says initializing it gives us an information on what's happening over here and then when it will be ready the car will just start going and probably just exiting the track all the time yeah to the right this time yeah and what's happening over here is uh you can see that the car is going and then stopping and starting over so each start uh, over is the another episode in the training session that you can see over here and then each time it's going it's just executing the step by step taking image deciding what to do and then adding a little bit of uh, what we call entropy which is just altering the behavior from the one that got inferred in hope to find a better behavior initially you won't see the difference because all the actions seem kind of random uh, but you will really hope to see that if it turns that it already learns but it doesn't work this way at least not initially and later on you will see that the car just goes around the track and mostly does what you would like it to do but every now and then it will just do something silly and this is kind of like i'm gonna try altering this maybe this will work maybe it will not work we'll see we'll learn from this so that's what the car is doing and when it stops the training session uh, SageMaker starts uh, training the model improving it based on what it's learned and what we get is the evaluate evaluating phase so what it's doing right now is it's using the model it used at the input for the first for the previous iteration and uh, in the iteration it checks what the progress is it records the progress of the car in the evaluation the evaluation that has greatest progress is being chosen as the best model you can see in the graph over here that it's being selected as the best model over here so yeah that's pretty much uh, what we've got over here and uh, the implications of this are as follows if you stop training you can continue by cloning the model when you decide to clone the model uh, the state that is being determined best based on the progress in the evaluation is being used as a starting point for your next cloned model uh, also, if you're racing, if you want to submit the model, the, the, the one that's being determined as the best one is being used for racing submissions as well. So this is the meaning of the best model over here. In the graph, uh, you get the average is reward as a green dot and then you've got a blue diamond. Uh, it's actually a square anyway. Uh, so yeah this is the average uh, percentage of completion during the training and the red square is um, the average completion in the evaluation at the beginning it's pretty much random really so yeah that's what you've got over here we've got the stop condition uh, the logs are not available yet only until at least not until we finish training and we've got some information about our trading session so like what reward function we've got so we can see it over here and then you will see the action space I actually went with the original depraiser which is the agent that's in your console the first time you start using it and, and it's pretty handy you could see that I took like it took me two minutes three minutes to start up the training session so that's what you get uh, when you start quickly 
Uh, and yeah, you've got the information about what the um, what the algorithm is being used, what algorithm is being used, and what hyperparameters are being set for for it. Uh, again, the hyperparameters are being more uh, described in the uh, in the sessions that I've already provided to you, uh, but uh, I normally look at few of those. So the gradient batch uh, this and batch size is kind of an amount of experiences that are being taken into a single training. The entropy is uh, about how random the actions become, like how much we explore. We can boost it a little bit. If we overdo it, then the car will just uh, fail miserably. Uh, the discount factor is kind of th the car when it goes, the agent when it goes, it has it, it really has two neural networks over there. And one of them is uh, deciding what the action should be. And the other one is trying to predict the best outcomes, the best actions going forward or what the reward would be to just kind of to criticize what the one that just infers the action does. And discount factor is a parameter that says how far ahead we're looking. The closer to one, the further we're doing. If it's one, it's kind of treating each next experience as the same value of it. And then if it's like 0 0.999, then it gradually just decreases, but slowly. And uh, I think the documentation suggests that 0 0.999 means looking a thousand steps ahead. Uh, and uh, on a, such an oval track, I don't think you will get more than 140 episodes in the single uh, in the single uh, steps in a single episode but it still will like kind of look at the further points with a lower value and then 0 0.9 would mean 10 steps ahead lost type is kind of the ability to forget so when the car is training uh, there are two ways to set it with the huber function and the uh, least square i don't remember sorry but yeah, it's pretty much just uh, one of them means that uh, the, the car is more eager to forget what it knew before to just adjust to the future actions, the, the ones that are the ones that are determined best right now. And the learning rate is kind of a how much of the knowledge we accept or how reserved we are about the knowledge that we gathered in the experiences. Uh, this is the I don't recommend using higher values pretty much and i recommend going to lower values quite quickly and then this means that there are 20 uh, episodes in the iteration before the training and the number of epochs means how many kind of retraining cycles are happening when SageMaker improves the model because it kind of does it multiple times um yeah so that and we can see the car is going the graph is changing slightly so we got higher reward but not so higher um, progress average progress over here but yeah let's go back over here and have a quick look at the reward function i'm just gonna open a new training and uh, just want to go to the next thing like view progress without providing a name probably not so yeah, a lot of scrolling because there's a lot of tracks already. And uh, here in the code editor, uh, as I mentioned, you get the values in the params. I skipped this on purpose. We, in this reward point in the sample one kind of says, try to be as close to the center as possible. It takes uh, two of the inputs. One is the track width and the second one is how uh, distance from the center and it says, uh, it well it splits the track into sections of a certain distance and uh, if the car is in a given section it will receive either one point half a point or 0 0.1 or if it's even further than half the width then it's quite likely off track so it gets really low reward and that's pretty much it you get more things like a location on track um, uh, the waypoints. Waypoints are kind of the coordinates that determine the center of the track that you can use if you want to. Uh, the heading of the car, the action taken, 
Uh, well, there's a number of those things of the oh, and how much progress it's done. So there's a number of those things that you can choose to put into your reward function. I re I recommend that you're rather cautious about how many you look you, you use because in the first like the most uh, highest enthusiasm session uh, the phase of deep racing, you're tempted to just do a beautifully over engineered function that just confuses the hell out of the car. The more inputs you take, you put into here, then the the less likely the car is to infer what you actually mean, what you want to achieve. So it's good to have a balance on what you put over here. Um, the racing tips and tricks uh, session that I've provided a link for in the chat. It provides a number of uh, ideas on how what strategies you can strategies you can use for uh, shaping your reward function. Um, right, so I think we're gonna move over to another thing. Uh, let me just okay, we've covered the garage. We haven't covered the community races so it will take one hour we're not going to wait for this training to complete i will show you the training that i started earlier just to show it right now oval cyclops fun fact i've just learned that cyclops is a singular form um yeah so when you complete training you get the nice tick completed and training complete you can now evaluate your model Evaluation, what it means is you can click over here and you can say, I want to try on this track. Well, whatever you choose. I want to do time trial evaluation or object avoidance, where you can say, like, let's put some boxes on the track. Or the head to head racing, where you can either race some bots that just go around the track in a quite weird way. Or, and this is pretty awesome, you can choose another model that you've trained and you do a race of your car versus your other car to see what happens. So pretty awesome. And, uh, and you can also submit uh, if you want to after the evaluation. We're not going to submit to the league races because I'm kind of training another model that I want to submit later on and I don't want to start with the one that's been trained for three hours on an oval track because the race tracks are a bit more complicated. Anyway, yeah, we've got this guy over here and I wanted to mention the community races. So one of the things that uh, you can do is take part in the Deep Racer League, but if you don't feel like taking part in Deep Racer League or you feel it's a bit too difficult or you don't want to get your friends involved in that one, but you still want to have fun with them, you can create a community race. So what it means is you can just choose a track, a type of racing, the rules, when it starts, when it ends, uh, give it a name, and you get a link that uh, you can share with your friends they can click and they will open the race and this means that they are joining the race so you can race uh, we will actually enter a race that i created for the need of this presentation racy muck race phase i will select a model which is the oval cyclops and i will submit it over here and then in the race, what you've got is pretty much similar to what is in the league. You've got a, uh, you've got the standings and there are zero racers. So I'm pretty likely to actually win this one if I don't share the link. Uh, you've got some details about how, you, how you're doing. Right now we're waiting because the model takes a little bit to actually evaluate. And then I'm just gonna quickly show you what it looks like in the league when we know more about our race. So let's go into the leaderboard. You can see that our good old JJ from the community is uh, just uh, nailing it again. He's really good. 
and then you get to look at how he's actually doing so no more hiding all the secrets and and you can see that he's fast and the line is really nice as well and the car just keeps going really fast it needs to complete three laps so that's what's gonna happen right now um, what happens if you get off track you get a penalty and uh, before it was slightly different in community races right now you also get the penalty in community races so pretty nice but you also get to choose what the best what uh, determines the best racer so you can choose the best lap or you can choose the average lap which means that you want to kind of have them uh, rather stable but also still fast uh, car uh, also you can say what your requirement is on how many laps should be completed so you can see JJ completed in 54 seconds uh, I'm not able well I'm actually completing my single lap in around that time right now in the training so I've still got some training to do uh, but yeah it's gonna be fun anyway so yeah this is what the training looks like let's go back to community races maybe we've got the results no we haven't got the results just yet yeah we're gonna go back to this come back to this a bit later um, so yeah I will use this time now to show you a bit of the well show you the cars really um, right, let me just move the camera a little bit So as I've mentioned, the car has the uh, computer on it, which is an Intel Atom uh, running Ubuntu. There's a pretty standard remote control car. Uh, it's not the highest shelf of those, but it's pretty nice anyway. Uh, and then there's the, like you've got the batteries over here, at least one of them, I haven't connected the second one on the, oh, actually I have this here, not here, sometimes I put them over here. And uh, the brackets for the shelf, so you can see it just fits over here, and the camera, and the camera comes on the uh, USB hub. So yeah, you can put the... You can put the shell over here and use pins to just uh, pins just to hold it in place. Now let's just uh, switch the car on. I'm just going to put it on a tape. I'm not going to calibrate it or anything, but just for, I'm turning it on and keeping it on table, and I don't want it to uh, get damaged. So. Um, we're just switching it on. I have one more battery. You can hear the beep, so this means that I've switched on the uh, RC car battery because this one is a LiPo battery that just powers the car part, and this one is a power bank that uh, powers the uh, computer. And uh, we need to wait for it to uh, power on. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to also switch on the other one. Vivo. Oh, you can see it's facing, it's getting ready. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And for Evo, you can see that there's a bit that, I hope you can see it, that it's rot that's rotating here on the top. And this is the LiDAR. What it does is pretty much has a sensor and the, it emits light, I think it's laser. Uh, so that it kind of hits a beam all around and the, um, the sensor just receives it back and based on that it builds a topology of what's happening around it. 
I'm actually not sure whether it's using this exactly or is it using like uh, zones when it trains the model. Uh, when you show it in the, uh, well, it has like a web dashboard that you connect to, uh, it shows it as zones and I'm gonna show it in a bit how it works and how it highlights that there's an object here and all that. And obviously it's got two cameras and the LiDAR is connected uh, in the middle over here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not switching it on right now because yeah, it's gonna stand on the table again as well. Um, I will not be presenting more details about how to set the car up, but we're gonna log into the console. So let's just uh, refresh the queue over here. I hope they haven't changed the IDs. Oh, this one hasn't been stocked up just yet, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, spoiler alert. We've got a truck today. And uh, yeah, so this is what the console looks like in the car. It's You can see some um, resemblance to the uh, depressor console uh, in the AWS services. Uh, so what you've got over here is a number of things. One of them is like the steering part and you can use it either for steering manually and uh, it got, it's got a small joystick which is really a nightmare to steer, be it a phone or tablet or anything. I never managed to actually do anything reasonable with it. But yeah, you can just do and you can turn the wheels. Can you see that I'm turning the wheels? You can't see the wheels turning. So yeah, let's do it like this. There we go. So yeah, it's riding all right. Uh, so yeah, that. Oh yeah, and my total mess over there. I should have cleaned it up before the session. And there's an autonomous mode which loads models that we've got over here. And uh, when you load a model, you can just set how much speed you want. It's pretty much like a throttle on how much battery power you put into the wheels when it's rolling. And uh, sometimes you want to go safe, sometimes you want to risk it and go full speed. Uh, the higher the speed, the higher likeliness that you will smash into a wall and lose a car. And I've seen quite a few being lost. Um, you get to manage the models. So you've got the list of them over here. You get the um, to calibrate the car. Mm, the rules are that when you change the battery, you should calibrate it. I'm gonna violate the rules right now just to save you some time. And then uh, you get some settings about something like uh, things like whether you want to enable the SSH server or not, and uh, connect to the uh, to the Wi-Fi, which color of LED you want to use. So let's, for instance, change into because both of them are blue. Let's go with lime. Well, lime doesn't look nice on my webcam. Let's go with orchid blue. There we go. Save. And you get information whether your car is up to date or not. And yeah, it's up to date at the moment. And you get a view of the logs and more resources. Uh, you get to see how you load the train, uh, load the models and uh, things like that. So there's a number of things. You can see like the robotic operating system logs in here as well. So yeah, let's, let's load ourselves a model. Right, ooh, we've got a result and we had one off track, so change of subject. We've had one off track and we've completed the one lap in 17 seconds. Let's have a look at this breathtaking effort. It's actually not as dumb as you think it is uh, with the oval track. So uh, what we've learned, I've actually seen cars being trained um, on the oval track 
but despite their only left turns they have learned to turn right and uh, the reason for that is that if the car is zigzagging around the track it will learn to just get away or away from the left line so yeah the cars know what they are doing well they don't know what they are doing but they can learn things that we are not aware they are learning anyway let's get back to the models our a model is still training let's go to the oval cyclops let's go into actions and we've got a clone that i've mentioned that we can use to continue training delete if we want to get rid of this model and download archive so right now we've got two options over here the complete model is something that you can use to archive your uh, model uh, yeah i haven't actually mentioned the cost so one hour of training of deep racer costs three dollars fifty cents and there is some cost of storage the mo storing the models i don't remember it's reasonably low but if you don't want to keep your models over here and they will just like you will get more and more and you will gather a lot of them you can download them using the complete model and then you can use a utility that's provided over here as well to import them through an S3 bucket. Right now we care about the vehicle model, so let's just download that. Save. And uh, let's go back to the models, upload model. Download, select, open. And now we need to wait for it to be uploaded. It says that it uploaded it. You can see that I've got quite a few models over here because I haven't been cleaning in a while. So let's see if we actually have this guy over here. Oh, yeah, fourth page, obviously. Oval Cyclops model. So here it is. Um, yeah, let's just put the car on the track for a moment and see what the car sees when it's on the track. So I'm just going to put the shell on. The shell isn't essential for racing, but it has some value. Uh, even though it's reasonably thin, it's kind of also elastic or it helps the car bounce back if it hits something and uh, the only time I drove into a wall without the shell I had to buy a bottle of super glue to fix a few things on the car so I do recommend that you use the shell when you're racing and also it looks kind of nice on a really pretty shell um, Evo has a shell as well it's slightly different in the looks so um, let me just transition to a camera so yeah Evo's shell is slightly different you can see that it has this nose over here it kind of looks like a shark yeah let's say it looks like a shark it has a hole for a lidar uh, its eye is slightly wider to just uh, fit two cameras in here and it's slightly thinner I think it feels to be slightly thinner than this one uh, and yeah uh, one thing if you get an Evo extension pack or something like this I recommend you don't remove the protective film from it uh, and the reason for that is that the protective film has a nice matte finish and I don't really like the shiny finish after removing it I thought it was like I, I, I didn't know what I was thinking when I was doing this so yeah just don't remove the film and then it will be a nice matte finish um, yeah let's put the car on the trunk
this truck? Uh, I got this truck from Lyndon Leggett, uh, who is another leader of the community. He he's been preparing in quite a few designs for those, uh, and it's really lovely and it looks awesome and uh, there's a lot of wows and ooh and ah in the office when you set it up. I had to prepare the bar barriers myself using the PVC pipe and uh, some uh, really nice sheets that I had to just cut and uh, reorganize, let's say. Uh, but yeah, it's small and the consequence of it being small is that the turn is rather... Um, yeah, the turn is rather tight and because of that if the car approaches it in the wrong way it will just lose sight of the road and will drive into the uh, barrier in the middle of the turn so yeah what we can do right now is let's try actually driving in manual mode for a moment as i said it's not going to be pretty Be careful. Ooh, stop. Yeah, let's just go back a little bit. Looks good. And now let's just mo load the autonomous mode. This is the best I've done steering this car. As I said, the last time I actually tried, I had to glue things. Oval Cyclops, load model, and now we wait. Uh, so what's happening right now is uh, the model is being loaded onto the into the inference engine in the car. Uh, and then what will be happening, it will be just using this to decide on what to do on track. Um, hopefully we get a lap over here, but I think, as I said, this one is uh, a little bit too tight and for um, the, the turn and because of that we will probably just not manage to. I've been failing miserably most of the attempts. I've actually worked out what I could do and uh, the car has springs in the front around the shock, ab shock absorbers. I've removed the bits of plastic supporting those springs so the car just like just goes down in the front. And uh, this means that it sees more of the road on the turn and it's more likely to just go around. So we can try this on the Evo because this is the one that I removed the springs from. And we'll see. Okay, we've got the model loaded. I'm gonna decrease the speed because I'm not sure what 50% really means over here. And I like this car. And there you go. That's how we lose it. Yep. Yeah. It just loses track of the car in the mint uh, in the middle. But what it does, I'm going to just take the car for a moment to show you something that you can notice in the car. Um, yeah, I will just remove the shell and showing you that. Look. The car keeps trying something. Just, uh, I'm not sure if I managed to if you managed to see this but uh, the car uh, when you just put it next to the line it tries to turn away from it which is pretty awesome this is pretty much what you're training it on for to stay on the track and you know, like to do its thing the best way it can 
So as I said, I'm not really good at training it yet because we don't really have the oval track uh, set up in the uh, set up in the training environment. Well, there is an oval track that we've used, but that one has just 90 degree turns. This one has a 180, and it's much sharper than the default reinvent 2018 track. So yeah, it's not happening. Uh, easily at least uh, so yeah let's have a quick look at the uh, at the Evo to just bring the camera back I will just switch over to the Evo. Go to the application. Let's try again. There we go. Um, so as I've mentioned, Evo has two cameras, and uh, only one of them is being seen. Something's not working for this car. Ah, it's really delayed. Let's just switch off, turn on again. Let's see. I believe the right camera is the one that. Uh, yep, yeah, left. I mean, the left camera is the one that we see in the screen over here. It's not combining the image over here. And then there is a LiDAR. You can see I have a switch to enable it. It, it. Everything else about this console is the same as for the other car because it's using the same firmware. It's just based on what you attach to it. It enables different uh, modes of working. If we enable LiDAR, what you can see is um, there are a few sections on the screen, uh, like slightly lighter lines over here and if there is something in the range of a given section it lights up in slightly reddish color so over here um, over here there's a camera stand now my hands are to the left so you can see that it's turning slightly reddish and I'm sitting behind, that's why you've got those two in slightly red as well. I'm just gonna move back and I'm gone. What you can use it for? Um, pretty much just for looking backwards. The front one, the front section doesn't lit up, light up at all. As you can see, it just uses cameras over there. So you can use this to detect what's happening behind the car and then you can try and train the car to decide on what to do based on this input. For instance, you can train it to just get in front of the opposing car to cause a collision, because according to rules, if the car collides with another one, the one that's behind is the one that's guilty. So that one gets a penalty. So yeah, that's pretty much what the what this looks like, what the car looks like. I will paste a, I can just switch back to the Presentation to the slides. Uh, so the, there's a link over here to a talk that I've done a week ago. So it's fairly fresh uh, on the. Uh, let me just copy it uh, on the car. So I've pretty much done what we've done over here, but I've also covered the calibration and some tips and tricks and what comes in a box and stuff like that. What the batteries look like, etc. Yada yada. So here's a link for to this presentation from the for the AWS uh, Peru user group. And back to the deep racer underground. So I've mentioned initially that you can race your model on a real car, and uh, the way it works is. Uh, John and David, they are organizing uh, underground deep racer events. Uh, the next one is happening next week, I believe. Let me just quickly check. 
um, yeah, 20th of October. So the way it's going to work right now is uh, uh, John has a link for the community race, as I've mentioned. I've actually got it as well. So let me just share this one with together with uh, uh, together with uh, John's uh, YouTube channel. There we go. Uh, so the links that I've pasted in the chat right now is first one goes to John's uh, YouTube channel where he streams the races to get uh, accompanied by David. And uh, the second one is the link to join the community race. So the rules that uh, John and David have uh, written down right now are there is a community race qualifier you need to submit your model the better you do uh, well if you're in the top five to get to race light on the track and the winner will get a prize uh, the track that you can see in the video is a slightly shrunk reinvent 2018 track so you can try to train using that one and uh and yeah the tricks that are involved are uh, well in the simulation obviously you will use the track that's being given uh, for the virtual race but on track uh, we're well in John's basement uh, there are different lighting conditions and uh, a few tricks can be used to adjust to that uh, that have been shared in the community before uh, so yeah you might want to read a bit more about sim to real transfer uh, or transferring the experiences from simulation to reality which is actually the tricky part when you train in simulation and then you try to get your car to do what you want to do there are papers by the AWS Deep Research Scientists about this and also there are some uh, well there are some documentation pages about this as well sorry yeah. uh, and I've mentioned the community so join the community please <laughs> uh, most of you probably are aware of it already because you're watching this stream in the uh, community channel but we also have a slack channel that you can join and uh, let me just share the links maybe yeah so we've got the slack channel where we are all available if you want to start if you need some help if you get stuck uh, we're there to help you we will be happy to help you that's pretty much what we're doing all the time uh, the, the main fun of it all is really community forming so you will see some news you will get some knowledge base over there and uh, and you'll meet some new friends so yeah just join us and let's have fun together and uh we're actually right now i think we're around 3300 members so yeah, quite a few people went through the community already which leads us to the last slide. Um, do you have any questions? I can see that John wrote nice track. So yeah, thanks John. As I said, I got it thanks to Lyndon. And uh, it, it spent like six months in a um, storage room at my company's office. 
Uh, I had to go to the office the other day, so I just picked it up and brought it with me. Uh, one thing I've learned is that um, vinyl trucks don't work well on a soft carpet, so I had to get some hard bolts to put underneath, but yeah, it's working pretty well. I get to try things over here. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I said, it doesn't really see the truck very well, so what I've done is uh, the uh, shock absorbers, the springs have like a small plastic things that support them, so I've removed those. You can see it over here that the springs are like they look like they are broken. So when I put the car on the table, what happens is uh, I'm just gonna hold it like this and just this goes down because of that. The car just sees the turn and I've actually managed to get my first lap recently, but the model is poor, so uh, it's still like it needs some tr some more training. But yeah, I managed to get a lap with the car and uh, pretty fun experience. I haven't hugged a car before. Another solution to it would be like, uh, you can see the bracket has a fixed angle over here. And I know that it's kind of breaking the efficiency of the training because this is this matches what you get in the simulation but if you could just adjust it to have a different angle over here this would also probably work i don't need to see that much ahead i really need to see some a little bit closer mm. yeah We've got 10 minutes left out of the 90 minutes, so yeah, if we don't have any questions, then you can claim 10 minutes of your lives back. And uh, yeah, so thank you for joining and I do invite you to join the community. Um, go and join John's race as well, try to qualify and uh, and yeah. One more, th oh yeah, one more thing that I haven't really mentioned is that uh, if you're new to this, uh, while 350 an hour seems like a lot there are ways to train cheaper and the community is uh, well the, it's a group of people also developing solutions to train locally or still in the cloud but just using a different stack uh, so yeah do join us and have a look around and we might give you something to just train even more and have more fun and uh, so yeah Thank you for your time and uh, enjoy your night. Bye.